Hi, I'm Jarita Postalwaite, and I wanted to talk to you just a bit today about the mission critical actions the board adopted on February 25th. Fall a year ago, we went around to every school in the district and invited all of our employees to participate in a strategic plan effort. In December, 14 months ago, the board adopted that strategic plan and also issued the contract for the Clemson Diversity Study that uh, was completed with results given to our board last August. Around the same time, all of you started working in earnest to get our accreditation in order so that Advance Ed could make their visit last fall. And as everyone knows, for the first time ever, our district was accredited. The Shared Future Group, representative of a broad-based selection of people from across Charleston County, was meeting at the same time, taking all of those recommendations from those various efforts and putting together some possible strategies or scenarios for our district to consider. The board received that report from the Shared Future Group in January, and now they're asking us to look at some mission critical actions that will be essential if we're going to realize the dreams that people of Charleston County have for their children. Everyone knows that our educators work hard. We couldn't have a more dedicated or committed group of individuals trying to support the education of all of our children. But despite all of our efforts, some of our children aren't thriving in our schools. Charleston County has some of the highest performing schools in the state, and we also have some of the lowest performing. In order to try to address in earnest these really challenging situations, the board asked us to look at a set of recommendations that we would bring back to them on June 24th. We'll have the next couple or three years to work on those recommendations, but in order to put the best ideas forward, there are about seven areas that I'll talk about uh, today. There are, in fact, 12 critical mission items, um, and I want to talk about a handful. First, I'll mention um, how these community groups are going to be formed. In North Charleston, Charleston, and West Ashley, the city council members and our board members, the constituent board members, and others are being asked to nominate parents who have children in schools, educators and community members who might want to serve on a small community panel to start looking at all of the data and the opportunities, the unique history and challenges of each of those areas, and then formulate some ideas. For Districts 1 and 2, planning there has been well underway. We're just uh, almost ready to purchase property in District 1. That's up in Allendale, McClellanville area. We have Lucy Beckham High School opening and Moultrie Middle expanding. We're taking another look at career and technology opportunities in District 2. In District 3, that's James Island, we'll have the new Camp Road Middle School opening. Um, out on Johns Island, District 9, a strategic planning effort has been underway for a while and we want to finish that up. In District 23, the Baptist Hill area, the constituent board and principals there have been very active in making some recommended changes and we will continue to work with them. In the coming months, the areas that will be working hardest and, and the areas that we'll, um, we'll, we'll support first are North Charleston, uh, the Downtown Peninsula area, and West Ashley. So briefly, in North Charleston, we're asking the community to look at all of their schools from kindergarten through the 12th grade and make some recommendations about what they might want to do differently. Because some of our lowest performing schools are in the North Charleston area, we're going to ask parents, educators, and community members to take a look at other models that might be available in, um, in Charleston County or in other regions of the country um, that have done a better job of bringing children just like ours to higher levels of literacy. In downtown Charleston, uh, we'll ask people to look at, uh, at the way the feeder patterns work. We've started some programs like International Baccalaureate 
that um, begin at elementary and middle school and don't go through to high, high school. There are other similar programs uh, that start out at the elementary level. We don't see them all the way through. We also have the challenge of many more middle schools on the peninsula than we can support with the population here. So we want to ask ourselves how we could put those middle schools together maybe in one setting and still let children and families have a lot of options within them. In the West Ashley area, we're opening up Stono Park and very soon there will be a new career and technology center on the West Ashley campus as well as a new middle school. So we're looking at whether there are ways to combine all of the children in West Ashley uh, into one middle school setting and also getting ready for the opening of that new career and technology center. All around there are opportunities for educators and parents to think about what kind of future we can build for our children if we start getting very clear about the goals we want to accomplish in the next two or three years. A couple of the, of the other critical mission areas uh, I will highlight today are um, a study to look at the choice and magnet opportunities. What can we do to make sure that more of our children have access and opportunity? What was our original purpose in establishing choice and magnet schools? And what impact are those schools having on our neighborhoods, on our neighborhood schools and communities? We'll be looking at how in the world we can make sure that we've built capacity supporting teachers and principals, making sure we have enough principals and teachers in the leadership pipeline, making sure that here at the district office we don't overpromise and then fail to deliver what we've told people we will do. We're looking at the legislative agenda. What might we recommend that would help Charleston? How do we overcome the challenges of Act 388 that constrain our resources to support all of these programs? And the final mission critical action I'll mention is our need to think about a much simpler and fairer accountability system. So we're working with Berkeley and Dorchester County educators and our business community to try to come up with an accountability system that really looks at how children are doing in literacy, in numeracy, how their soft skills are developing, and to what extent children feel as though they're nurtured and supported in our schools. Why are all these efforts important? These efforts are essential if we are going to be able to close some of the readiness gaps that our children face every day. We have incredible opportunities for young people when they leave Charleston County Schools, and we're preparing most of our children to take advantage of those opportunities. But there are far too many children, particularly children of color and poverty, who have been disserved by the system and the way it's operated in the past. We have to acknowledge that and have the courage and the will to do something about it. We wanted to make sure you understood what's happening in our system and invite you to stay tuned or to be part of the committees that will work to bring these recommendations forward. As always, thanks for all you do. We look forward to continuing the conversation.